Good afternoon, anybody or everybody. <laughs> this is Tracy Kulik. I hope that I'm not going to mess up words throughout our entire training. I'm going to try really hard not to. Um, anyway, thanks for joining us. We're going to begin in just a couple minutes. We have 80 people registered for this um, session, so I want to make sure that they have a chance to get into the GoToWebinar. Um, but we'll get started and we'll definitely be ending on time. So even if we get started a couple minutes later, uh, we'll be respectful of our finishing time. Thank you very much. Talk to you in a few. Hey everyone, this is Tracy. Um, just wanted to make sure you know you're in the right place. We are going to give folks another minute or two to get signed in. Um, I've been watching the attendee number go up over the last minute or two. So um, we've only got about two thirds of the folks that are registered on. So I think in another minute or two, that should be helpful um, and we'll get started. I know if if your calendars look like mine, you don't have any time to disengage from one conference call or webinar and then log into the next one. So I want to hopefully people will be able to do that in the next minute or two. Okay, I've got 104. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to end on time. So I want you to know we'll be respectful of your time. Um, hopefully, we'll get everybody's questions answered. There should be plenty of time for that. Um, and we'll just hopefully, folks, as they're logging in, will um, be able to catch up. But I um, just wanted to say hello. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we're going to be doing a demo today of HR Connect to share the new fluid look and feel. Um, those of you on the phone, if you can, can you hear me clearly? Just use the um, raise your hand feature in the GoToWebinar if you can, um, so I can make sure everybody can hear me. I see some hands up. Thanks, guys. Great. Um, so again, thank you for joining us today. This training is for HR professionals and managers. I suspect that just about everybody on the phone is one or the other or both. So thanks for coming in and um, 
and joining us for this training. We really appreciate your time and active participation. As I mentioned before, my name is Tracy Kulik. Um, I am the Director of Change Management and Communications at Enterprise Services. I see a lot of familiar names here, so I'm sure I've met um, many of you. If I haven't met you, I hope to meet you soon. Um, and I'm joined today by several of members of my team and also my colleague, Tanya Robertson, who is um, an HR IT specialist here in Enterprise Services. So um, though I am not an HR professional, I do play one on TV, and I am fortunately surrounded by many knowledgeable individuals who can answer your questions if I cannot. Um, of course, we're recording today's session, so I'm really hoping that I don't um, mess up any words or forget any parts of the presentation that are important. Um, but we are going to send out the deck and other resources after the session, so don't worry if there's things that you find very valuable in this presentation, which I expect you will. Um, you will be getting this deck later and you can refer back to it, okay? Or share it with your friends, whatever works. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. If you are, um, everyone should be on mute. Yep, I can see. Um, and we just ask that you stay on mute um, if you, unless you have a question. It looks like we've got about 50 people on the line. So what I'll ask is that you put your question in the little question box. We will have someone monitoring that throughout the training. Um, and then at the end, if we aren't able to answer questions, we'll certainly um, be getting back to everyone that's in the meeting with the responses to those questions. We haven't had any problems with um, making sure that we can get questions answered so far, but this is a larger group. So I'll just leave that out there. Um, okay, so we've already got a question or a request. Please go over how to do a temporary promotion. Um, I've I feel like that may be in here. If it is not, then um, we can certainly go over that. I will get started right away then. All right, thanks for using the question box. Now everybody knows how to do it, awesome. All righty. Today we're gonna begin by providing an overview of HR Connect Fluid and the changes that went live yesterday. So little snafu yesterday, um, HR Connect Fluid went live and then proceeded to not be functioning properly most of the business day. So our apologies. It's not our system, obviously, um, but we do, of course, feel badly that, you know, on the first day that we're launching it um, or that the system owner is launching it, that uh, it wasn't working properly. So thanks for those of you who brought that to our attention. It was fixed by four o'clock, and so it should be working great today. You shouldn't be getting any error messages. Um, so, okay, we're going to dive deeper into your role in PAR submissions as we walk you through live demonstrations of submitting PARs in HR Connect. So that's the great thing about this training is it's not me talking the whole time. It's a few slides followed by a demonstration. So we've been getting a lot of positive feedback on this um, training format. I hope you'll also find it useful. At the end of the course, you'll be able to navigate HR Connect and understand what has changed. You'll be able to understand the roles and responsibilities of your bureau's HR and enterprise services in that PAR submission process. You should be able to submit PAR actions with all required attachments and approvals, and you'll be able to understand the timeline for PAR submissions, okay? And then of course, as I mentioned, we'll answer, or we'll end the course by answering outstanding questions, and hopefully we'll be able to cover um, what everyone's requesting throughout the, the demonstration. All right, so here's the agenda. I don't think we need to spend a lot more time on that. Um, just a preview of what we're going to cover. Slide four, ground rules for our presentation. I already mentioned, um, please go ahead and post your questions in the questions. There's also a chat feature, but the questions feature allows us to capture all the questions in um, like an Excel format. And um, it's really helpful when we want to save them for later and make sure that we respond to them all. All right. So before we begin, I do want to get a sense of our audience today. So we're going to use something fun. It's a polling tool um, to make the training more interactive, um, to keep you guys, you know, listening and paying attention. Um, you can respond through either text messages or by going to the website pollev.com slash commerce, and it's P-O-L-E-V.com. Uh, slash commerce or the text message option is really easy. You just put in the number 22333 as the number that you're texting to and then the word commerce. You can text that to that feature and um, 
you'll get like a message back saying that you're in our poll. All right, I'll give you guys a minute to do that. Oops. All right. And then our first question, what is your role at your bureau? If you're responding via text, you can see there on the slide, you can either text A, B, C, or D to respond. Okay, we have a lot of managers today, excellent. I hope this is very helpful for you. I expect 100% accurate PAR submissions after today's training. I'm just kidding. See, this is the stuff they cut out in the recording when I start ad-libbing and telling sad jokes. All right, thanks for participating in that poll. It looks like the majority of our participants today are um, managers. Okay, so now here's um, another question. How comfortable do you feel with HR Connect? So far, no experts. Great, a lot of folks know, know what they're doing, but could use a refresher, excellent. We have one expert, that's probably Tanya. There's always somebody in the crowd who has to who has to do D. <laughs> what is HR Connect? Well, you're in the right place to find out what it is. Awesome. Okay, so it looks like most of you use HR Connect fairly regularly. Um, so I think today will be good because it's a good refresher and it also shows you um, the new stuff, right? The new look and feel of Fluid. All right. So without further ado, we will move on. We're going to talk about HR Connect Fluid and show you how to access it, how to authenticate an HR Connect, and also use some of the basic components. So yesterday on June 29th, Treasury launched changes to the look and feel of HR Connect, and the goal was to improve customer navigation of the site. And really important to point out, these are visual and navigational changes. How you submit and track actions in HR Connect has not changed at all. Okay. Two of the major changes are the tile-based homepage and the navigation bar, or nav bar, as it's called. Um, HR Connect homepage is now organized through tiles, and that's providing you, hopefully, with a quicker way to navigate to your routine tasks. The tiles that you are able to access are based on your role in HR Connect, so HR professional, manager, etc. The nav bar on the right side of the home page allows you to quickly navigate to those favorite pages that you have, um, anything you've recently visited, and then any other HR Connect modules that you have access to for your role. All right, we can move on to HR Connect basics. Um, HR Connect, for, for that one person who put role, uh, letter D and does not know what it is, it's a web-based human resources system that provides a variety of HR professional self-service features, primarily used to submit personnel action requests for processing, or PARs as we call them. Um, some interesting facts, HR Connect is actually owned by the Department of Treasury. Um, we never used to say that, but recently we've had a lot of um, issues and so forth, and maybe some problems or you know things that aren't working quite right, and um, we just want to make sure that everybody's clear, like we support HR Connect and we also will, can help you with HR Connect, but at the end of the day, it is owned by the Department of Treasury. So if we're trying to get some changes in there for you, or if we have to put a ticket in for help with something, um, we can only control ourselves and not them. So please, um, in advance, we thank you for any patience that you need to exhibit when we're trying to get something done for you and, and with Treasury on that. They're pretty responsive, but still we just want to make sure you guys know not our baby we just help take care of it all right um, and then to access HR Connect you can go to this um, web address hrconnect.treasure.gov if you get, forget the link or you don't have it bookmarked you can also find it on the portal and then please also remember that you need to be on a commerce network or VPN on your government computer to access HR Connect Alrighty, so as promised, I am not gonna talk forever. I'm now handing you over to Emily so that she can do a quick demo for you, and then we'll move on to our next topic. Emily, I think you're muted All if right. you're talking. 
Oh, there we go. Can everyone hear me now? Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy, for that awesome introduction. Um, so here we are on the HR Connect homepage, and I am now going to log in as if I am a manager. All right, not sure why that's not working. I'm going to try that again. All right, so here we are on the HR Connect homepage. And you'll see um, the first thing that Tracy mentioned was the tile-based format. Um, so you'll see that all of the tiles are actually what used to be here up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, and here we have my team, my information, my report, and work list. So that's one of the biggest changes of this HR Connect fluid update. Next, I'll show you the toolbar in the upper right hand corner. So this is the home page. So at any point during your journey in HR Connect, you can click this home button and it will take you back to the home page. Next, this is a search bar if there's anything you want to search for. This flag right here will take you directly to your work list. And then I'll go over this three bar actions list in a minute, but this is how you would want to personalize your homepage or sign out. And then lastly, I'll call out this navigation bar right here. Um, this is just another way that you can navigate around HR Connect. So you'll see the tiles are very similar to what you see on the landing page, but we have my team, my information, and reports. Now I will log in as an HR professional. Okay, so now I am logged in as an HR professional and you'll see that my access looks a little bit different depending on uh, your role within the Department of Commerce. You'll see I have my HR roles, my information, reports, work list, and then I have these three tiles that appear here at the bottom, Bureau Maintenance, Organizational Development, and Workforce Administration. So if I wanted to show you, you'll see here that the tiles are exactly the same as they were previously in HR Connect, if you were familiar with the platform before the update. Everything is exactly the same. The navigation here under Workforce Administration is just a little bit different. You'll see that um, you have more of a drop down, more easier navigation. So I can click through all of these. I can minimize the folders by clicking this triangle. You'll see I can scroll through here. I'll go back to the home page to show you that all the other tiles are still very similar to how they were before. So this is exactly the same as previously, and I can easily just go back to the home page or I can use my navigation bar. And then lastly, I'd like to show you how to make something a favorite. So we're not entirely confident that your favorites will transfer over into the new environment. So in order to make something a favorite, let's say I use the HR authorization page very frequently, and I want to add this to my navigation bar, or my favorite. I'm going to click this new window button right here, and it'll take me to a new window, and then I'll click this actions list, and I can add it to my favorite. And I could, I could rewrite the name if I wanted to. It looks like I already have the favorite. I'll just overwrite it there. And then you'll see that it pops up under my favorite. And I can click there if I would like to get there. I'll also call out that all of our QRGs and SOPs have been updated to reflect these changes. 
And then lastly, it looks like we had a few HR Connect proxies on the line. So I'll log in to show you the HR Connect proxy page as well. While I'm logging in, if there are any questions, I will open it up. It looks like so far our only um, request is to demonstrate how to do a temporary promotion. So I think we're good for now. Okay. All right, so now you can see I'm logged in as a proxy and you'll see this proxy actions tile pops up right here um, for HR Connect proxies. And I can click there and the page is exactly the same as it was before. And so I can see people and positions to initiate actions and run reports. I'll go back to the home page. And if there are no more questions, I'll pass it back over to Tracy. All right, thanks for that demo. Um, okay, awesome. so now that we've gone through the new the changes, right, and that look and feel, um, keep putting your questions in the question box. I did see that we had someone else. So I'm gonna go through this material um, fairly quickly since everyone here um, has an idea or a feel for, for this, and that way we can squeeze those things in at the end. Um, but first, we're going to do another poll question. Um, I want to see how familiar you are with the PAR submission process. So can you go ahead and respond to the Poll Everywhere question on the screen? <laughs> okay. Looks like... A review would be welcome. That's awesome. And there are some folks on the line who've never submitted a PAR. Nobody else is an expert. What? There's always somebody who's an expert on the line that we can uh, we can utilize. But okay, cool. So then I won't waste any more time on this slide. We'll just jump right in. Um, this module is going to provide an overview of PAR submission and processing guidelines. Um, I'll try to not to talk too fast because sometimes it gets a little bit complicated, but um, this is actually a pretty good outline of um, roles and responsibilities from the time that a PAR is initiated until it is processed. So let's begin at the top with the initiators. By initiators, I mean managers, proxies, HR, all are responsible for identifying the need for a PAR, for gathering the required documentation, for setting and confirming approvers based on your organization's business policy, and then submitting that complete PAR in HR Connect, right? So depending on what the action is, any of you could be an initiator, okay? Um, approvers are responsible for reviewing actions in HR Connect, and then approving, canceling, or working with the initiator to update the action. The last approver must submit the PAR to Enterprise Services HR, a full pay period in advance of the effective date with all required documentation. So what does that mean? It means that we don't consider that HR, um, that PAR complete until it's done with your last approver. So we need to receive it by our deadline in its full approved um, form, okay? It, it does, it's not two weeks when, you know, when, you, when it's submitted into HR Connect to go through your process, that isn't, that isn't the two weeks that we're talking about. It needs to actually get to us fully executed before um, our deadline. So we'll talk more about that, but I just wanna, to make that clear because I know that when we first transitioned services to enterprise services, obviously everyone had different internal business processes. Every bureau had a different way of submitting PARs. We had some bureaus who you know, would accept PARs submitted the night before and make them effective the next day. That's too much work for people, first of all, but um, I don't think that would be sustainable or you'd have a lot of unhappy HR people. Um, but, you know, we recognize that there's this is we're still in a transition, right? People still are trying to get used to our way of doing things. So 
we just that's why we're doing these trainings and that's why we just kind of keep emphasizing our deadline over and over again and why i will be talking about it a lot over the next few minutes um, okay so in most instances the last approver is going to send the action directly to enterprise services hr for coding and processing hr connect has a predefined workflow that's going to route that action to local hr if it's needed to go there okay if that approval is needed they will review it add whatever necessary information to those actions um, and then they'll come to us for processing okay so you're, you don't need to know if something should be going to local hr because it's going to be routed in hr connect automatically okay once we receive the par through hr connect we review it for completeness and timeliness and then enterprise services will confirm that the action is compliant with all processing requirements they code the action perform a quality assurance review and then submit that par to nfc for payroll processing emphasis here the action will only be processed if it is complete if the action comes to us late or or after our two-week deadline we'll notify you via email and then that action may be processed at the beginning of the next pay period okay now if the action is incomplete we're going to notify you electronically both via the hr connect system and also via the portal okay there's a lot of confusion about where emails are coming from. We hear it all the time. Somebody will get an email from HR Connect, they'll get an email from us. Sometimes getting multiple emails can be overwhelming and we understand that. We just want to make sure that you are aware. If you've got a late or incomplete part, we need to let you know about it. And we can't control what HR Connect is sending you. So just wanna put that out there. If you're receiving multiple emails, more than likely it's from two different systems right both from us and from hr connect um, we put a lot more detail into our emails so you have you probably want ours more than you want theirs but in any case our goal here is to try and get that action processed the way you wanted to um, so when something's incomplete we can either restart or push back the action which we're going to talk more about later in the training all right par submission deadline unless there is an agreed upon exception which we'll also talk about, um, all PARs, including those requiring your lo local HR's approval, must be submitted to enterprise services with required approvals, as I mentioned earlier, one full pay period before the effective date. And what we mean by that is 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on the first Monday, two weeks prior to the start of a pay period. This slide has an example for pay period two PARs, okay? In this example, any PAR received after that first Monday, which was the first Monday of pay period one, because we want it effective the first day of pay period two, right? Any PARs submitted after that first Monday of pay period one are gonna get pushed to pay period three for processing. Any PAR with incomplete or missing documentation is gonna be restarted or pushed back ES will follow up with that initiator via email once we realize the PAR is incomplete. If the PAR is not resubmitted with corrected documentation by the second Friday of pay period two, then it's gonna to have to be pushed to pay period four, okay? So it's really important that once we recognize and notify you that we need something more for that PAR, we're still trying to get it processed with the effective date you've requested, but we need to get whatever that corrected documentation is back by the second Friday of pay period two. Otherwise, it's not gonna be affected that, that pay period, okay? Processing that PAR can take up to 10 days. Um, there's a variety of reasons why, you know, volume, resourcing, all the things. We say up to 10 days because we'd like it to be one or two days, but we also recognize that there are times where it's gonna be longer. So this is our way of, you know, um, exceeding your expectations. If we give you our worst case project, projected um, parameter, then more than likely you're gonna be happy because it's not gonna take that long, right? And we recognize that there are gonna be times when it may take that 10 days, but we're hoping not. Um, but that's the entire pay period, right? That's the entire effective pay period date. So if you could just not reach out with questions during that processing window, because more than likely, you're gonna get the good news that it's processed and taken care of 
If you have questions because you feel like you're waiting and it's past that window, then absolutely reach out to us. Okay, so now we're gonna go over an overview of simple steps. We call this Know Your Part. I'm all about the acronyms. Um, to ensure that enterprise services can process your action on time. Okay, We're going to review each of these steps in more detail over the next few slides, but I will go through relatively quickly since you guys, the majority of you have done this before. Okay, so the P in Know Your Part stands for Protected File Format. This step reminds you to always submit supporting documentation securely. First, attach your required documentation through the HR Connect attachment feature. That is the best way to do it. Get it right in there in HR Connect. It all comes through to us in one piece. Good to go. If for some reason that is not possible, it's not functioning properly, you're unable to attach, please submit an incident on the portal to report that issue to us. Okay. But remember, PII cannot be submitted via the Need Help feature on the portal. We have a special need help, which is need HR help button. That's where PII can be submitted. There are two sides of the portal. One is secure and to receive PII information and one is not. So that's why we, we emphasize this. And there's lots of like red text all over the portal telling you do not submit PII here. And yet somehow people still do it. So I'm working on that. I'm not sure what else I can do except to just reemphasize it, right? Eventually we'll all get there. All right, let's move on to the next component of submitting complete and timely PARs, selecting your approvers. A, approved by all parties. That's what that stands for. As an initiator, you are responsible for confirming and changing your approvers. This step reminds you to choose the correct approvers based on your bureau's business policy and approval chain. Okay, we recognize that a lot of you have internal bureau business policies that need to be observed. So make sure that you're selecting the correct approvers. Okay. And if you're not sure who needs to approve an action, consult your supervisor. They should know. Okay. HR Connect is going to default that authorizer fields or all of those actually to your personal reports to hierarchy. So those authorizer boxes are going to be auto populated with your bosses. Okay. If that is not or your approval chain, sorry, I should say, not always the same thing. If that is not the correct approval chain, you can use the magnifying glass icon to search for another authorizer, okay? So that's important to know. All right, next slide, required document. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so this step reminds you to attach all required documentation to your request in HR Connect, which will help enterprise services process your PAR in a timely manner. At the end of this presentation, we kind of put a slide together with like most common pain points, I can tell you this is the most common pain point, is not having all the right attachments or completed attachments on a PAR. And unfortunately what happens is, we'll get back to someone and say, hey, there's no signature on this attachment, or hey, you missed this attachment, whatever. And then that person is not able to get back to us in time with that completed document, and we end up slipping the effective date. So. Um, just really important to note, like double and triple check that all your attachments have signatures and all the fields are filled out and make sure they're all on that par attached because that is the single biggest way that we end up not being able to honor effective dates is, is the attachments, okay? A lot of pars require multiple attachments. There's, I mean, some of them five to 10, right? Depending on what you're trying to do. Um, we have a great required attachments for PARS quick reference guide or QRG as we like to call them. It's on the portal, but also we'll send it out after today's session. That thing is like very valuable. Every PAR on there required documentation for it. So you will know what you need to attach and what needs to be completed. Now, something to note here, HR Connect does have a five attachment maximum but some actions are gonna require more than that. So what you can do to resolve this is you can combine multiple documents into a single PDF, okay? All right, I think I've beat that drum enough on missing attachments. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, final piece in Know Your Part guidance is the critical step of submitting PARs on time. T is for timely submission. 
So we've talked about the enterprise services standardized PAR submission deadline, right? Um, to make sure that we can process it by your effective date. Again, I've mentioned PARs must be received a full pay period in advance, which is by midnight, the first Monday of the previous pay period, okay? And again, wanna, wanna emphasize the fact that this does not mean submitted into HR Connect by an initiator two weeks before the effective pay period. It means submitted by the initiator, approved through the approval chain, and pushed on to enterprise services by the first Monday of the pay period, okay? So if you know that somebody in your approval chain is gonna be out on vacation, I would say get that PAR submitted before they leave to make sure that you can get their signature on it because once they're gone, then you're kind of at the mercy of their schedule, right? So just kind of, we talk about this later on, but just some mitigations that you can do to try and, and um, make sure that you know your stuff gets, uh, that your effective dates are honored. Um, just some little helpful hints. Okay, so if you have a late action, it will become effective at the beginning of the following pay period. Of course, there are a few exceptions to this rule, right, that require actions requiring expedited processing within the current pay period. Here's some examples on the slide. Okay, leave without pay actions, last minute terminations, adverse actions, of course, cancellations, settlements, et cetera, and so forth. Um, anything that you don't see on this list, right, is something that we'll consider. We just need an email from your local HR, and that's usually your head of your local HR, right, to enterprise services that, appro that provides approval for the actions. So we can't just decide like, hey, you know, this is something that's important. Um, we need it from, from your local HR letting us know that this is authorized and approved by them for that kind of action, okay? All right, I sense that we have a question in the question box that I can answer, so let me take a look here real quick. Um, all right, Angela, my completed PARs take at least one month and usually two months for anyone to take action on it. Hmm. Okay, that's not okay. Um, that should not be the norm. That should not be happening. So maybe what we'll do, Angela, is um, get with you offline after the training and get some more details on what's happening um, because I, I definitely, that should not be happening, okay? So um, let's see, I have somebody with a hand raised. Ugh, I'm messing things up over here. It looks like Kelly is answering other questions live in the chat box, so that's good. But, um, can somebody just remind me after this to email Angela and get more information from her, from my team? Thank you. All right, time for a knowledge check, guys. When is the PAR submission deadline? Everybody better get this right. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know how many people that was, but I'm proud of you so far, 100%. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm up whenever I feel like it. Sometimes that's true. That is true. As long as as long as you're willing to accept the effective date that we feel like putting on it, then I think you're good. Yes, there is a deadline. All right, clearly I have to beat the drum a little longer. Um, actually, you know what, while we're here, I do wanna make one um, comment, and this may actually be part of Angela's confusion. Um, a lot of times people will submit uh, actions months in advance, like a promotion action, right? Because you know somebody's gonna be getting an increase or something along those lines. So you'll submit it um, months in advance. Though it has been submitted, very far in advance of our deadline, it's still not going to get processed until right before the effective deadline. Now, I recognize that that can be uh, problematic when let's say you submitted something two months ago because you knew so-and-so was getting a promotion and in the effective pay period, I send you a note and say, oh, by the way, you forgot some of your documentation, right? That's frustrating and annoying and then if you're not able to collect whatever that documentation is in time for the effective date, that can be really problematic, right? We recognize that that is a pain point with our current processing guidelines, okay? I have spoken to, um, my, not just me, myself and the head of the HR Tower, have talked to the service center about that processing um, guideline. And 
we're trying to work together to get it changed so that it does not affect folks like negatively who submit their things far in advance because they're able to and then get you know kind of have a bad customer experience when they find out that some documentation needed to be um, changed or corrected or whatever and they don't find out until right beforehand and then they're scrambling right so i want to acknowledge that um, as something that we are working on with the service center all right let's go to the next slide Okay, so par errors, restart versus pushback. This is really good information because there's the two different ways that we can do stuff and, and you need to know, you know, why, what do we use one for as opposed to the other? Um, so as I mentioned, we cannot process incomplete submissions, right? Or anything with an error. Um, so to correct the error, we'll either restart or push back the action. So when you restart one, it sends the action back to its original initiator. If your par is restarted, go ahead and correct any errors and resubmit the PAR for approval, okay? Pushback sends the PAR back to the previous approver within the work list, so it's a little bit different. PARs can be pushed back multiple times all the way back to the initiator if necessary. Use of restart or pushback functionality for an action is determined based on the error that needs to be addressed. Actions are restarted if that error requires the initiator's corrections. So maybe missing documentation, incorrect job codes, things of that nature. Actions will be pushed back for simple errors like maybe an incorrect effective date or a missing required signature. So as we've talked about a couple of times, actions that are pushed back or restarted may impact the timeline for processing. So you should resubmit that PAR for approval no later than that second Friday of the pay period, as we've talked about. If the action is not submitted in time, then it will have to get pushed to the next pay period. Hopefully that will not be an issue. All right, now that we've talked about PAR submission and processing guidelines, let's do a demo of how you would submit a termination PAR for a voluntary separation and then track its status in HR Connect. Emily, I'm turning it over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Tracy. So can everyone see my screen? I'll take silence as a yes. Okay, so um, here we're going to walk through a few demos to close us out here. Um, first, I am logged in as a manager, and I will show some actions for an HR professional next. So also, I want to add that this is our test environment. So anything I do here today will not actually affect the individuals and this is not real information. So I will click my team to see my direct report. You'll note that I can also click here to designate a proxy. Um, that's right where it used to be. So today we're gonna submit a personnel action request and I'm going to demonstrate a couple if we have time. So I'll click on Mark. Okay, so here we can see the list of personnel actions that I can submit. So I'm going to go ahead and click termination as an example for today, but we can also go through a few others. So now I'm on this page and I can see that it'll automatically populate the authorizers based off of your bureau policy. If you need to change it, you can use the magnifying glass here to look up another name. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. Oh, looks like I didn't put in my action reason, so I'm gonna go in here. We'll say Resignation. This is also, I would like to point out, this is where the attachments you would upload. Um, so you would click there and it would connect to your computer. I'm going to change the effective date to somewhere in September. And then I could also put in any comments or instructions here um, when I'm submitting. So then we'll click Submit. It'll say my request is being processed and it's thanking me for using HR Connect. So then that will go through all the different approvals and be routed to ES for processing, at which point it will pop up in the portal. 
Okay, so that's how you submit an action as a manager in HR Connect. I can now um, show you how you would do that if you were doing a temporary promotion. So it looks like I would click temporary promotion right here. And then I would next choose the position that I would want to promote my employee to. So let's see. I'm gonna click right here. And then after that, I could choose this position. I could fill out some information, um, kind of similar to how it was before in our previous example. Um, I could set the proposed not to exceed date. So let's say the promotion is going to, the temporary permission will end in August. And then we can see all of this information here. And then we'll click submit. Awesome. So now I'm going to log in as an HR professional and show you what that would look like because the view is a little bit different. Okay. So as an HR professional, I would want to click Workforce Administration right here. You'll see the page is exactly the same as it was before. So I'll enter our sample employee who's going to be Kelly Smith. And we'll say her sub agency is 51. Okay, so now I can see her profile and you'll see the last affection, the last action that was submitted here. Um, and to initiate a new action, I would click this plus sign right here. Okay, so then I can go ahead and fill out the information. So let's say um, this is going to be an award. We'll do October. Then for the action field, which is right here, we'll go in and we can click the search button and we'll say it's a monetary award. For the reason code, we'll click here. We'll say it's a bilingual award. We'll make sure the no act code is correct. For this, it would be 849 for individual cash awards. We'll click here to attach any documents that need to be attached, and then that'll connect me to my computer to upload. I'll also add an authentication date of today. Okay. And then we'll also want to go in and specify the award data by clicking here. And we'll say, this is going to be the individual cash award. We'll set the award percent to 2%. And we'll click OK. So now since I like how everything looks here and I think I've done it correctly, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now it will tell you where you want everything to go. So I'll click the right router. So here I'm going to set this as enterprise services because I want it to go to ES next. I'll click that and I'll click OK. So it looks like it wanted me to enter in the things again, a few more fields again, but um, that is the general flow of how you would submit that as an HR professional. And then lastly, I'm going to show you how to get to the work list as an HR professional, so we would click this little flag button, which is a nice shortcut. 
And then as you can see here, we can see some actions that are on our work list. So I would go ahead and click temporary promotion. Looks like this one was in my queue. And then I would want to make sure the PAR stat status is correct. I'm actually going to change that to HR1. And then I would click save. I'm getting a few error messages because I'm in the interest of time. I'm trying to speed through this a little bit. Um, and then it would also give me the same option to route to ES as I had um, in other scenarios. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So that is how I would look at my work list and then go through to approve an action and let it go to the next person. I'll pause here for any questions. Are there any questions? Can anyone, Kelly, do you need to unmute anyone? Is there anything in the chat? If not, I will pass it back over to Tracy. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, so in the same interest of time, um, I wanna make sure that we do have time to um, talk about, or look at any other questions that have come in that Kelly hasn't been able to answer. Um, though she's been doing a great job answering them on the uh, chat so or in the question box so thanks kelly okay um so what we'll talk about now very briefly is you know a few mistakes that we see frequently right which we already talked about um some are submitting actions after the required deadline um, also without either without appropriate documentation or with missing signatures um, we do have a helpful document a on the uh, portal called 2020 PAR Processing Schedule. That will help you realize like just kind of like the pay schedule that we all have stuck in our cubicle. Of course, now we're all virtual, but um, you know, it's the same kind of thing where you can just kind of quickly look at it and say, okay, I want it to be effective this date. This is the date where I need to submit it by. This will also help you set reminders, right? On your calendars, share the information with your colleagues, especially those in your approval chain to just let them know um, that you're going to need them to go into the system by a certain date or on a certain date. Okay, next one is types of errors. So you can see here that there are two kinds of errors, right? There's errors that we make, enterprise services, and there's errors that our customers make. And by errors, we mean, um, you know, incorrect documentation or incomplete documentation, signatures, however, all of those things. If we make a mistake, we are absolutely honoring the original effective date. Right. I mean, no questions asked. That's what's happening. If, however, there's a customer error, then we're going to do make every attempt to get it processed when you wanted it processed and, and to honor that effective date. But if we don't get it back in time or if we don't get the corrected materials back in time, we are going to push to the next pay period. So just wanted to let you know, we take responsibility for those errors. And as I mentioned, we're asking the service center to look into those actions that are submitted way in advance to see if we can possibly get those reviewed, you know, within a certain number of days of processing. So if there is or of submission, so if there is something that's flagged, we can make sure that gets taken care of sooner rather than later and doesn't cause undue hardship for you. Okay, so a few things to key reminders, right? A few things to keep in mind as you're going through this process. Um, and then we can go to the next slide, which is additional resources. Um, recognize that there's a lot of material we covered today. Some of you may be more familiar with it than others. Um, you may need some reminders as you go to perform your responsibilities. So there are several training resources available to assist you. Um, this page, slide 35, shows you this table, which is great. Um, it'll refer you to Training resources related to enterprise services, PAR processing, and HR Connect. Many of these guides go into more detail about PAR actions. Um, those links will take you directly to the QRG in the portal, so you don't have to search for it in our search function. You do, however, have to be on the network and on your government furnished equipment. So just be aware that those are on the portal, which is a 
secure environment and you will have to be VPN'd in on your computer, your work laptop or computer um, in order to get to those links. Otherwise, you'll get some sort of error message. Okay. But two of your key resources as managers are the portal and um, the HR Service Center. We encourage you to use the portal reference library, right, to find those things in there because um, you can access that 24-7, whereas the service center is open from 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so the next slide is actually Department of Treasury trainings. So some, th these are valuable. These are actually pretty good trainings, okay, if you want to try and access them. Um, but they are Department of Treasury, right? Because remember, HR Connect is not our system. So we have no control over resources or, you know, we've gotten some great suggestions in the question box about like, hey, it would be really nice if HR Connect had X, Y, Z or had all these listed. We agree completely. Unfortunately, Treasury has not done that yet and it's their system. So all we can do is try to make it as easy for you as we can by creating things like the QRGs and the trainings and things um, so that you'll at least have somewhere to go and, and find those lists of things that, um, that are helpful to you. So I say all this because though I want you to utilize those trainings because they're helpful, because it is Department of Treasury, there may be some features and functionalities highlighted in there that are not applicable to you as an enterprise services customer, okay? So for the best, most accurate information about what you can do in HR Connect, use our um, set, use this session, the materials from the portal and the reference library as your primary sources of guidance. Okay, we've got four minutes left. Um, let's wrap it up with our what did you learn today slide. I'm anxious to see. This is free text, so you can type in whatever you like. Hopefully the word nothing does not come up, but we can take constructive criticism, no worries. All right, great. We learned about the new look to HR Connect. When a par is due, awesome. Anytime I can impart that information, that's good. <laughs> You're just learning that? <laughs> what a mistake it is to become a manager. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. That was funny. I feel your pain. Okay, cool. Make sure you put things in on time with all needed documents. Great. Um, okay, so somebody got familiar with how the PAR goes through the process. I hope that was helpful. The portal is easier than it looks. Okay. I think you mean HR Connect, but I'll take it. The new HR Connect system appears more user friendly. Good, we'll give that feedback to Treasury. Cool. Wow, a lot of responses, guys. Thanks for playing my game. Okay, great. So I'm I'm seeing here that a lot of people needed that refresher on how how to submit that part to make sure the time it's processed timely. So thank you for that feedback. We did, we had been hearing that, um, you know, people were confused about our, our power processing guidelines, which I completely understand. So um, the more we can provide this information to you, like if we need to do more of these trainings, um, we are going to be doing things like this periodically um, for, especially for like new managers and, and folks who are new to using HR Connect. So we'll be doing that. Um, I like here, good to know that enterprise services will honor their mistake. Um, question is, how do we know when it is a mistake on their end? So that's that's a good one. Usually um, we will let you, well, always, right? If something needs to be restarted or pushed back, we're gonna let you know why. Um, and sometimes we might say, I've, I've had this happen before. We might say, well, this documentation was not attached, um, you know, and, and we've had errors made where something was attached and for some reason, we don't know why, um, it was not immediately seen by the analyst or whatever, and we've honored that effective date for things like that. Um, we're gonna have to work together, I guess, to figure out what and and why something happens, but um, we, the federal team at Enterprise Services, are dedicated to making sure that if we make a mistake, we make it right. So um, just know that, and thank you for acknowledging that on here. I appreciate it. Okay. Looks like we still have some questions. 
Don, I hope I answered your question about knowing when the mistake was made by ES. We'll usually tell you, you'll see like, this is restarted because there's missing documentation or there's a missing signature or et cetera. You know, we didn't receive it in time, things like that. How do we know when a PAR has completely processed? 2 p.m. Um, Kelly, it's two o'clock. Can we grab that and respond? To yep, her. No problem. Thank you. Got All it. right, great. I just, I just don't want to wait. I don't want to stay on the line if others need to jump. I actually have a two o'clock meeting as well. Um, but listen, guys, really appreciate the robust participation here. Thank you for all the questions. I hope that um, the answers were satisfactory. And if they weren't, let us know. We can, we can, you know, have a conversation about it. Those of you who we didn't get to your question, we'll certainly follow back up with you. Um, and again, thank you so much for your participation today. I hope this was helpful. Have a good one.